we're going to talk about a slotted waveguide antenna in this uh, lab experiment. So I have the antenna here. So this is a WR90 waveguide. So I'm going to just talk briefly about that. And as you see, on we I have two walls here. This is called narrow wall, and this is called broad wall. So on the broad wall, we have different uh, slots on the broad wall. And then from here, we're going to get our radiation. So we're just going to talk about uh, this uh, quickly, and then we're going to go to the lab. So this is a waveguide that we have. So to explain that, let me just mention quick, quickly here. So this is, a, as I mentioned, that's a WR90 waveguide. So this WR90 waveguide, I mean, it might be a good idea to just say what does that mean. So before that, let me start my coordinate. Let's assume this is X, Y, and this is A, this is B, and it's a, this is a metallic structure of the cross section being rectangular. So these are all metal. It's a hollow metallic tube of cross section uh, rectangle. And then we're gonna, we're gonna essentially, this is essentially guide electromagnetic wave within its structure. Now, as you see, if it's rectangular, I have two important dimension, A and B. This A and B essentially determines what frequency band um, I can guide the electromagnetic wave inside this waveguide. Usually, the smaller the frequency band, for example, when I'm looking at lower frequency ranges, the waveguide becomes bigger. If I'm going to higher frequency, the waveguide becomes smaller. Now, when you, when you uh, have WR, this W essentially means waveguide. And this R is an indication that you have a rectangular waveguide. And this 90 here essentially means that the, the large dimension, which is A, is 0.90 inches, which in our case, if I convert it to, for example, millimeter, that becomes 22.86 millimeter. So that essentially means if you look at this waveguide, this is the broad uh, dimension, this is A. So if I measure that, that should be 22.86 or point, uh, 22.86 millimeter or 0.9 inches. So that's my A and B in the case of WR90 is 10.16 millimeter. But you can think of B approximately as half of A. So if this is 22.86, you can also consider 10.16 to be, I mean, approximately half of A. Now, in, in waveguide, we have a cutoff frequency. So they're, they're like high pass filters. So above a certain frequency, they pass electromagnetic waves. So for this rectangular waveguide, the cutoff frequency, which determines the fundamental mode, so we cut, we're going to call it F of C, cutoff frequency, is going to be equal to C, velocity of light, divided by 2A. So you have this dimension, 2 times A, you have the velocity of light. And this velocity of light, if it's inside, inside a waveguide is air, that essentially would be velocity of light in air. And then you have cutoff frequency. That essentially means if I operate below the cutoff frequency, this waveguide is not going to guide the energy. If I go above the cutoff frequency, it starts guiding the electromagnetic waves for me. Now, uh, to have an optimal operation, we have different bands for waveguide. For example, this WR90 is perfect for 8.2 2 to 12.4 gigahertz. So that essentially is my WR90 waveguide. And so in this lab, we're going to operate it at 10 gigahertz. So that would be almost center frequency of this WR90. Now, so in the lab, you're going to talk, you're going to see more details about the cutoff frequency and so on in the 
in the student manual of the lab. Now let's see how this uh, slots over the waveguide would work. So to, to understand that, first let's make an observation here. If this is my waveguide that I have here, so this is the narrow wall. So this, what I'm showing here is essentially this narrow wall. So as you see, in this waveguide, I don't have any slots on the narrow wall. Whereas if I make it the other way, you see the slots over here. So essentially that's the broad wall that I'm considering. So I need to focus on this wall essentially. This would be where I need to have my focus. Now, if I, if I, if I now I could, for, for example, make a cross section of this so that you, so you see a 2D a structure of that. So I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna plot this part. So if I do that, then that would be what I get. So this is going to be, let me make it a little bit bigger. A different color. That would be the wall that I'm considering. And I mean, we can just assume that it goes to infinity for now. So this would be essentially A, and this is along Z. So this is essentially along Z, it's gonna continue. This is my X, and this is either Z or minus Z, depending on how you define things. So this would be essentially this part. Now let's pay more detailed attention to this. So again, this is the broad wall, and as you see, I have these uh, slots. So now these uh, slots are placed like this. So you see, they're not exactly at the center. They're offset with respect to the center. So if this is the center, which is x equal a divided by two, they're offset above and below that x equal a divided by two. To understand that, you need to understand how they operate. To understand how they operate, let me let me plot the current distribution. You can also find that in the student manual of lab vault training system. So if you plot the uh, current distribution along x on the on the broad wall, so you see that I'm going to have very a strong current close to the edge. So these are very a strong current and I'm gonna have also the same thing on this edge. So these are the currents and as I'm getting close to the center line, the currents decreases. So when I'm getting actually to x equal exactly a divided by two, then the current will be essentially zero. So now you can imagine that if I don't have currents here at x equal a divided by two, if I put a slot over there, it's not going to be perturbed much. So in, in other words, it's not going to be excited. It's, it's not going to perturb the currents because you essentially need to perturb the currents to excite the slot so, so that you can radiate from that slot. So that's essentially why we won't put it right at x equal a divided by 2. So again, let me, for example, just for the sake of discussion, one, put one a slot over here. These currents are so tiny. So when you put a slot over here, it's like as if nothing happened. So that's why we're going to offset it a little bit so that we get to the stronger currents. So that's essentially why we do that. So if I... So let me just have my currents again here. So these are a strong current and the current starts decreasing. I'm showing it with the smaller arrows. And when I'm getting to x equal a divided by two, essentially my currents become so small. Now, if I go to the next one, for example, in the next one, I'm gonna have current distribution like that. And again, tiny currents close to the XA divided by two, like this. Now, again, I can repeat it one more time. 
the strong currents close to the edge, and then tiny currents here again, like this. And you probably notice that as I'm moving along the uh, length of the waveguide, I'm gonna have change of polarity between currents to current. Now let's place our uh, slots over this broad wall. So again, I'm gonna show you this. Now, if you if you if you map this to this, you see that I have one here. So I have one slot here. I have another one here. I'm having another one here. And I'm having another one here. Now, this is essentially going to cut the path of the currents, and therefore it's going to be excited. So when it's going to be excited, essentially I have a, a slot with electric field distribution over the aperture like this, that this from this aperture can radiate for me. So this is the way that it works. And uh, one thing that I want to also mention here is that I'm also having current in the Z direction. So, so if, I, if you look at the currents, I'm also going to have, so if this is the length of the waveguide, I'm also going to have current in this direction. So these are my currents. So you may ask, if these, are these currents going to interact with this uh, slot, it, it's, the, the interaction would be very minimal. Because remember, if you look at these uh, slots, these are very tiny in in this dimension. So in this dimension, they're extremely uh, small. So because they're extremely uh, small, if the current passed in this direction, the level of interaction is very tiny. So the currents that flowing along the lengths of the waveguide are not going to interact with them. If I wanted this current to interact, perhaps I could have had the uh, a slot oriented in this direction. So if it's oriented in this direction, then they're going to interact. So in this case, I'm also I'm essentially interacting with the currents in the x direction. So these uh, slots are, in terms of the lengths, they're half a wavelength. So these are the half a wavelengths. Remember that when I'm talking about these type of things in a waveguide, that would be the wavelengths within the waveguide. So please check that in the uh, student manual to understand the wavelengths within the waveguide. And then, uh, then uh, I mean, you can ask me any questions if you have. Now, if you want to excite this system, we need to we need to of course excite the waveguide. So if I want to excite the waveguide, I can always use one of these uh, coax to waveguide adapter, and I can have it here. So this is the way that I can do that, of course. So that would be a coax to waveguide adapter. So this part that you see here is essentially for mounting this structure when I want to measure it. Now, I have now one open end that I need to decide about this. So the 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 type of a slotted waveguide antenna that we have in this lab is is a standing wave so when you excite it we're going to create a standing wave and whenever you hear a standing wave that means we are dealing with reflection it's not just propagation in one direction so we're also going to have reflection and uh, to do that in this type of waveguide we're going to essentially short circuit this end so we have we have one of these that we can essentially, this is essentially, you can connect it to this end and you can short circuit the structure. So this is essentially metal. You can just connect it here and that would be excitation from this side and then short circuit from the other side. The, when you wanna place this short circuit it, in terms of distance, you need to be careful. So the, if the distance of the short circuit from the center of the last slot should be quarter wavelengths. So, so you need to have quarter wavelengths between this and that. Now, if you look at this and uh, you calculate wavelengths in this waveguide, you see that this is not quarter wavelengths. 
This is more than quarter wavelengths. So, uh, but remember that when you calculating the impedances, half a wavelength doesn't play any role. So if I say quarter wavelengths, or I say quarter wavelengths plus half a wavelength, they're, that they're essentially the same thing. I could also say quarter wavelengths plus half a wavelength plus another half a wavelength. That would be essentially the same thing when it when you in terms of impedance. So if you calculate the distance from this short circuit to the center of this waveguide, you see that th that's going to be about quarter wavelengths plus half a wavelength. So that if let me just uh, check that and then you can calculate it for yourself later on. So I'm considering, I'm considering center of the, this last slot over here, and I'm going to calculate the distance from the short circuit that I'm going to put to the center of the slot. I don't know how visible it is, but it's about 2.7. So the 2.7 would be the distance from the center of this slot to this edge, which I'm going to short circuit. So, uh, so you want to check if the 2.7 makes sense uh, or not in terms of the required distance. So, so again, remember that I'm exciting my waveguide from this one using a, using a, 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 a coax to waveguide adapter. And at the end, I'm going to short circuit this. So that would be the structure that I have. And we can go start our lab right now. OK, so before starting our slotted waveguide antenna, uh, we, I would like to perform another measurement and then use that measurement to be able to characterize the gain of the slotted waveguide antenna. So, just to uh, just to emphasize here, this is my uh, slotted waveguide antenna with these uh, slots over here. Uh, but my purpose here is to measure its radiation pattern, but I also like to know its gain. So uh, to do that, we're going to rely on a previous lab in which we measured the gain of this uh, small horn antenna. So. If I want to remind you about what happened in that previous lab, we first took two identical large loop antenna. Based on the two identical antenna, we understood and we calculated the gain of the large uh, horn antenna. So we have two identical one. Remember, two identical method, two identical antenna. We can figure out the gain of the uh, uh, this large horn antenna. Then we use the gain of this low, uh, large horn antenna as the standard gain, and we figure out the gain of this uh, small horn antenna. So in fact, now we know the gain of this antenna. So you can think of this antenna right now as a standard gain at 10 gigahertz. We know its gain. So I'm going to perform one measurement with this. So you can look at the maximum signal level, MSL, and you also know the gain of this antenna. The distance is 1.5 meter. I'm going to keep the same distance. And then I'm going to mount the slotted waveguide antenna. So for that, you can also look at the maximum signal level that you get in the LabVolt uh, software. And then comparing the maximum signal level of this small horn antenna, with the maximum signal level of a slotted waveguide antenna, and knowing the gain of the horn, a small horn antenna at the same frequency, 10 gigahertz, uh, approximately 10 gigahertz, the exact one is 915 megahertz, uh, then you can calculate the uh, gain of the slotted waveguide antenna. So. To start that, the distance is now set to 1.5 meter between the two antennas. I can start my acquisition. So I'm going to start the RF power, and I'm going to go and start performing the measurement. So uh, let's start the measurements. So as you see, the small horn antenna is uh, perform its rotation. 
One thing that I forgot to mention to you is that the, both, the, both of the antennas are mounted in a way that I'm dealing with vertical polarization. So the polarization that's coming from the large horn antenna is vertically polarized like that. And you can figure this out by the way that we've excited uh, the waveguide adapter at the back of the horn antenna. So the excitation goes like that. And the electric field in the waveguide is also vertically polarized. It gets to the aperture and it's going to radiate. And that's my horn antenna right now. So, so now it's done. I, I can now go look at what I, uh, what I acquired and then use that as my reference. So let's go and check it out. Okay, we have now mounted uh, the a larger horn antenna as the transmitter and a smaller horn antenna as the receiver. We already know the gain of the smaller horn antenna at the frequency of its operation. And, uh, and also both of them have been mounted in a way that they're vertically polarized. If you look at the rotation of the antenna under test, which is the smaller horn antenna, you realize that we are collecting H plane right now. So this is essentially H plane of the horn antenna. As you can see, I applied 18 dB of attenuation here in the software in the right column. And I'm going to start my uh, acquisition right now. So let's uh, start our acquisition. Uh, remember, you already know the gain of the smaller horn antenna from a previous measurement that we performed. So uh, so you can look into that and then you, you, should, you should use it for this uh, lab. So this is essentially the backlog that we have. And now we go to the front lobe. So that's our front lobe and so this is our essentially pattern i'm gonna store it under h plane so this is my h plane and i'm gonna store it so Okay, so I, I've stored it. Uh, you know the gain from the previous uh, measurement that we performed. And if you check that, you realize that the gain in the previous measurement, uh, sorry, if, if you check the gain from a pre the previous measurement, and also here you realize that the maximum signal level, if you look at on the uh, right column, you see it's minus 3.11 dB. So it is minus 3.11 dB, therefore uh, that corresponds to the gain measurement. Now we're going to do another measurement with, the, uh, uh, with our slotted waveguide antenna, and then we use this maximum signal level to calculate the gain of the slotted waveguide antenna. And before doing that, I can also set the MSL position to zero degree so that it now looks a little bit better. Okay, we just measured uh, the H plane of the small horn antenna and we had the maximum signal level at minus 3.11. And uh, we know, already know the gain of the uh, smaller horn antenna. So, I mean, you can use that as the reference to calculate the gain of the slotted waveguide antenna. So that's all we need from our standard gain. But uh, I'm going to do one more thing here, and we don't really need that, but I'm just going to just do it in case. So what I've done already is that I've rotated the small, a smaller horn antenna by 90 degrees. So if I bring a smaller horn antenna, I can just show it to you. So this was uh, the way that it was mounted earlier. So if you look at the back, the electric field direction in the waveguide is like that. So this is now po polarized in this way. Now to go to the H plane, what I'm sorry, to go to the E plane, I'm gonna rotate it 90 degree. 
So I'm going to mount it like that. So if you look at it from the back, now this is the direction of the electric field. So I, to measure the E-plane of the smaller horn antenna, I rotated 90 degree. But because when I rotated 90 degree, the polarization would be horizontal. I also rotated the uh, larger horn antenna by 90 degree. So to repeat that, this was essentially what I had initially. I'm going to show you the back. So this was originally what I had. So this would give me H-plane measurements when I rotate like that. But then to, to measure E-plane, I rotated this 90 degree. But remember, even in E-plane, I want to measure copole. So I'm also going to rotate this to have polarization match. And then I'm going to rotate this. And this is going to give me the E-plane of this. Now, if you remember from our previous discussions, the maximum signal level in the E-plane and H-plane of this smaller horn antenna should match. And uh, this was something that uh, ideally we should have it. So if they match, I'm going to get exactly the same maximum signal level. And I have the same gain, of course. So in the gain calculation shouldn't change. So I'm going to do uh, the E-plane data acquisition of this. And uh, and then let's see what's going to happen. So we're going to start our e-plane data acquisition. So uh, so ideally, I want to get exactly the same maximum signal level. So if I don't get it, uh, then you could choose one of them. So the one that you trust your measurements more. For example, you may say measuring the directive, uh, the more directive cut is better in this case because we are not in an echoic chamber. So probably uh, it's more accurate and then choose your more directive cut and choose that MSL. If they become very similar, then I mean, then that would be uh, wonderful. So we're gonna go and check what would what is our measurement and then after that we're going to go and mount the slotted waveguide antenna instead of that uh, a small horn antenna okay let's let's go and check our uh, pattern that we got for the e-plane okay now we have our uh, a smaller horn antenna mounted in a way that it is uh, for e-plane cut. And I'm just gonna perform the e-plane cut again uh, to see what would be our pattern. So let's uh, start our e-plane cut. So I'm just gonna go start acquisition and we're performing our acquisition. So as I mentioned earlier, I mean, to this is we are using this measurement just as our standard gain. So we don't really need to do this uh, but I'm just doing it in any, in any ways to see how close the maximum signal level of the E-plane and H-plane would match. They ideally need to be identical for this case. But I just wanted to check, uh, see what's going to happen. So if they're not uh, identical, probably we need to a, a little bit work on our measurement, maybe have a better placement of absorbers and things like that. So our E-plane is also done. So, so let's uh, store that under e-plane. And uh, so I'm just going to press OK. And if you remember, I rotated the previous one to, so that the maximum signal level is zero. And I'm going to rotate this one to now. You see, this is very uh, nice because this was my h-plane. This was my e-plane. And as you see, uh, the maximum signal level it, it, it's almost identical for E plane is minus 2.95 for H plane is minus 3.11 so it, it's written on the right column here so to be consistent with the student manual we're going to use the H plane one so uh, for your calculation assume that the maximum signal level is minus 3.11 dB and uh, but it was it was nice to confirm that they're very close Okay, now let's go and start the measurement of our slotted waveguide antenna.
Okay, now that we have finished performing the measurements for our standard gain, let's go and focus on our slotted waveguide antenna. So this is our slotted waveguide antenna with six slots on the broad wall of the waveguide. So, uh, so if you pay attention to this particular slot over here, its distance from its center to the edge is a slightly different than this one to the edge. So, and we, you know that one end needs to be short circuited. From my discussion on the whiteboard, you remember that the one that's going to be short circuited is the one whose distance is quarter wavelengths. But it might not be quarter wavelengths, it could be quarter wavelengths plus half a wavelength, or quarter wavelengths plus half a wavelength plus half a wavelength. Half a wavelength has no effect on the impedance. So the one that's that's uh, that should be short circuited is this one where the distance between the center of the slot to the edge is about 2.7 centimeter or so, if I, if I measured it correctly. Now, so I get my short circuit, so this is my short circuit, and I need to connect it to this part. So, so let's connect it using this quick, lot, quick locks that you've seen before. So if I do that, so let me, let me connect it. So this would be one connection, and this would be the other connection. So that's essentially my short circuit. Now, from this side, I'm going to excite the waveguide, and for exciting the waveguide, we have a coaxial to waveguide adapter. So I'm just going to, again, connected like that so that I get my excitement from this side and then I have short circuit. So essentially I'm having a standing wave in this structure and then I get my radiation from these slots. So again, I'm gonna use quick lock to, to tighten this uh, connection. So I'm just gonna do it now. like this. So if you, now I have my, so to be consistent with the previous one. So this is the excitation. So you see, I have excitation here. This is my short circuit here. So metallic sheet here. And these are the slots that I have. If you look from the back, you see that I have this for mounting purposes. So I'm going to use that to mount it to the, uh, to the receiver tower or receiver mast. And this is, of course, the excitation. This is the coaxial cable here. So, so now, if you look at this uh, antenna here, these uh, slots, they have electric field polarized vertically right now. So the electric fields on the aperture of these slots are all vertically polarized. The direction of maximum radiation is toward you. So essentially, the E plane would be this plane. So this is essentially E plane. Correspondingly, H plane would be this. So that would be my H plane. So if I start rotating this structure like that, that means I'm rotating in the H plane. So you're me measuring H plane of this antenna. That would be our first measurement. But remember, if you rotate like that, of course, you're measuring H plane. But if you want to measure copole H plane, you need to make sure that your polarization is correct. Remember, the electric field is polarized like that. So you want to make sure that the horn antenna that transmitting has electric field coming toward it like that, and then you're rotating in the H plane. So that would give you copole H plane. So let's go and mount this antenna and, and make sure that we perform our copole H plane measurements. Okay, we have now mounted our slotted waveguide antenna. So if I get closer, you're going to see that better. So this is our slotted waveguide antenna. So you see that we have the six slots over there. Now, if I show it from the back, you would be able to see the excitation coming from the back. So one side we have the excitation and the other side is essentially short circuit. So that's the 
a structure that we have right now. So now if I get to the front of the slotted waveguide antenna, uh, based on what we've covered in the class and also on the whiteboard in this lab, these are vertically uh, polarized. So, and right now, based on the rotation that we're gonna see later on, let me get the axis of rotation too. Based on the, this rotation, we're measuring in the H plane. So, so, and, but remember, these are vertically polarized. So therefore, when we have our horn antenna here, the horn antenna needs to also be vertically polarized. And in fact, it is vertically polarized, especially you can see that better if I go to the back of the horn antenna, you see that this, I have a waveguide in the back and the cable is coming and, and uh, feeds this waveguide. So if you know your waveguide, you know that the wave inside the waveguide is now vertically polarized. So when it's coming from the horn antenna, that would also be vertically polarized. Therefore, now I have polarization match in this uh, transmit receive system. And uh, so this is okay. This is copole in fact. And therefore when it rotates, uh, and right now based on what we discussed, when it rotates, that's gonna collect H plane. So I'm gonna have my copole H plane. So let's go and perform our measurements. Okay. We have now mounted our slotted waveguide antenna and uh, we're gonna start collecting its H plane pattern measurement in its copole H plane. So I'm gonna start the RF power and uh, I'm gonna start performing the measurement. So let's start. Now we can also a little bit focus. So now this is the back radiation coming. So now the antenna rotate so that it becomes very, so you can see it right now that it's becoming almost in the same direction as the horn antenna. Now it stops. So let me just zoom in a little bit on this part so you, you see your antenna you see that this is vertically polarized and let's go and check our measure okay we have now mounted our slotted waveguide antenna in the h plane acquisition mode and uh, the transmitting antenna is the large horn antenna with the same polarization, which is the vertical polarization. So we're gonna start our acquisition. The distance is still 1.5 meter between the aperture of the horn antenna and the aperture of the slotted waveguide antenna. So let's start our data acquisition. So this was the maximum signal that we just passed. And now we are approaching to the back of, of the slotted waveguide antenna. So uh, right now we are almost at the back. So we have our back lobe and now we are to the side of the slotted waveguide antenna with respect to transmit antenna. So now we are passing from the side and we are approaching toward the main beam of the slotted waveguide antenna. So yeah, that's essentially done. And I'm gonna store that under document two, so a new document. And since it was H plane, I'm gonna have it under H plane. So I'm just gonna store it. So we have that and it's, so let me just emphasize here that this was the H plane 
of the new measurements. This this one that I just highlighted was the H plane of the smaller horn antenna, and this was the E plane of the smaller horn antenna. Since uh, to to avoid it being a little bit confusing, maybe it's good that I remove the E plane of the small horn antenna, so you can compare this uh, with this one here. So now. Uh, to to uh, to uh, have a better comparison, remember that I rotated the max uh, the the pattern of the small horn antenna so that the maximum signal level is at zero degrees. So I'm going to do the same thing for the uh, a slotted waveguide antenna. So we're going to put that at zero degree so that you can compare it better. So now. Now, the highlighted one is the pattern of the slotted waveguide antenna H-plane. This one is the pattern of the smaller horn antenna H-plane. And it's very interesting that uh, based uh, on this measurement, the maximum signal level for the H-plane of the smaller horn antenna is minus 3.11 dB. And for this one is almost identical. Uh, considering the uncertainty in the measurement. So the number that we have is minus 3.07 dB for the slotted waveguide antenna. Now, based on these, uh, based on these and knowing your, uh, the gain of your smaller horn antenna, you can calculate the gain of the slotted waveguide antenna. So now, uh, we would also perform another measurement and this time we're going to measure the e-plane of the slotted waveguide antenna so let's go and perform that measurement okay we now want to perform this uh, the pat pattern measurement of the slotted waveguide antenna this time we want to go to e-plane so to get to e-plane we rotated the antenna by 90 degrees so now it's going to be mounted like this and you can you can look at the axis of rotation here so essentially the antenna is mounted like this and if i go to the back of the antenna you could also see the structure so from the top we feed the antenna and the bottom of the antenna is short circuited so this would be the the configuration for performing e-plane pattern measurement now if, if if you if you remember the aperture distribution of the slot antenna you know that the electric field is now horizontally polarized so now when i look at this uh, horn antenna that i have here if you uh, focus on the horn antenna here especially the back you see that uh, this is now vertically polarized. So if I perform this measurement right now, since the antenna is mount, antenna under test is mounted to perform E-plane measurement, but the polarization is mismatched. It, it is now horizontally polarized, whereas the transmit antenna is vertically polarized. So if I perform it like that, it would be cross-pole E-plane measurement. But I'm not interested in cross pole here, so I'm I'm now gonna go and rotate the transmitting antenna, this antenna, by 90 degrees, so it becomes horizontally polarized, and then I'm gonna go and perform uh, the uh, measurement of this antenna. So just before doing that, I'm gonna I'm gonna also talk a little bit more with you guys about the E plane of this antenna, and then we're gonna perform this pattern measurement okay so to start our e-plane measurements i thought i, I mentioned uh, i explained e-plane again so you see this is now the the way that we mount the antenna under test for e-plane measurement to remind you why this is e-plane i want you to again remember the electric field distribution over the aperture of the slot antenna so the electric field is in this direction 
So it's essentially toward the narrow side of the slot. So the electric field is like that. So this is the direction of the electric field in this direction. Direction of maximum radiation is toward you. So this is going to be essentially the E-plane. So now I need to rotate my antenna on their test in the E-plane, of course. So it's going to be essentially E-plane cut. And so that's essentially would be the way that we're going to do our E-plane cut measurement. The only thing you need to be careful is that because now the direction of the electric field is in this direction, you need to make sure that the transmitting antenna provides this polarization for you. So uh, to do that, we need to rotate our uh, horn antenna from previous measurement so that it becomes also horizontally polarized. And then having a transmitting antenna horizontally polarized, we're going to start rotating our uh, a slotted waveguide antenna like this so that we can get our e-plane cut. Okay, now that we have explained the e-plane cut, let's go and perform our measurement. So the antenna under test is mounted correctly. The only thing is that, as I noted, this is expecting vertically polarized. Right now, our horn is vertically polarized. So there is a polarization mismatch, so I need to make sure that the, the direction of polarization uh, would rotate 90 degree for horn antenna to become horizontally polarized. So to do that, I'm just gonna get my horn antenna and simply rotate it 90 degree and then I'm gonna tighten it. So now I have my horn antenna at 90 degree. So I mean the aperture is a little bit uh, not aligned, so I'm just gonna align it. So hopefully it's reasonably aligned. So this is now horizontally polarized. This is accepting horizontal polarization. So I have my polarization match. I'm gonna start my uh, RF power and I'm gonna press acquisition and I'm gonna perform my acquisition. Now, I'm just going to zoom in so that you can better. Now, this is back radiation. So the back lobe is being collected right now. Now, we should be able to see the six slots. Yeah, now they're, they're more visible. So now this would be the front radiation from the uh, antenna. So let's go and check the uh, what okay, we got. Okay, now that we performed the H-plane cut of our slotted waveguide antenna, let's go and measure its E-plane too. So just to remind you, this was the this the highlighted one is the H-plane of uh, the small horn antenna, as you see, the maximum signal level is minus 3.11 and the half hour beam width that we got is 40 degrees 0.39 and this is now the E-plane which has the similar maximum signal level, theoretically it needs to be identical. It's very close though, it's minus 2.95 with the half hour beam width of 31.37. Now, if we go to H-plane of our uh, slotted waveguide antenna, we have a maximum signal almost identical to the previous maximum signal level, in this case, minus 3.07 and half cover beam widths of 12.97 degrees. Now, we're going to do the H-plane measurement for this antenna. S sorry, E-plane measure. This the one that I'm actually showing here with the half power beam width of 12.97. That's in fact my H-plane. Let's start our E-plane of this antenna. So let's press data acquisition and we're going to get our pattern. So, uh, so remember again, Ideally, we need to have the maximum signal level identical in this case uh, 
uh, compared to its H plane. I mean, this is the maximum signal level of E plane compared to maximum signal level of H plane. So they need to be identical. Uh, theoretically, let's see how close they would be. Immediately, you can see that the E plane that you are measuring in term it's much broader compared to H plane. I'd like you to explain why that's the case. So that would be one question that I have for you. So let's store that under E plane. And now to be consistent, let's rotate it such that the maximum signal level at zero degrees. So we, we've got that. So now to better uh, compare our, this, com this measurement with the previous one, let's let me uh, before doing anything let me turn off the rf generator so that we can see it better and we can listen to it better okay i just turned off the rf generator so that we don't have that beeping noise so let me tear uh, let me uh, uh, hide the e plane and h plane of board antenna so if i do that now what we have is just this one is H plane, this uh, very uh, narrow half power beam width that we have is our H plane. And this one that I just highlighted, the broad beam is our E plane. If you look at the maximum signal level, that's actually very good. They're very close. Uh, the E plane has a maximum signal level of minus 3.31 dB and the H plane has minus 3.07 so they're almost identical half power beam width in the E plane is 66.32 in H plane it was 12.97 which is consistent with what we see here so now uh, let me also bring the E plane and H plane of the smaller horn antenna so you can now you can see everything in one plot. Now the question that I have for you is to calculate the gain of the slotted waveguide antenna based on the smaller horn gain because we know the gain of the smaller horn antenna, we know the maximum signal level, so we would be able to do that. Now the question is what maximum signal level you should use uh, ideally, E plane and H plane should have the same maximum signal level in this case. They're slightly different, but uh, but let's uh, just to be consistent, let's use the H plane value. So for the a smaller horn antenna, you're going to be using minus 3.11 as the maximum signal level. For the a slotted waveguide antenna, we're going to be using minus 3.07. So, and then we just want to see what would be the gain that we're going to be getting. Okay, now that we have seen uh, the pattern of the a smaller horn antenna versus a slotted waveguide in E and H plane, it's also good to uh, uh, see it in a different way of presentation. So, you see, this is polar plot. So, we have the angles from 0 degrees, and then you have 30 degrees here, 60 degree, and then you come back here to again uh, 360 degree. So, you could also check that using Cartesian plot. Now, in this case, uh, instead of having the polar plot, we have the Cartesian one. So we opened up that 360 uh, angle that we rotated into 180 from one side and 180 from the other side. So we called it positive, for example, 30 here and negative 30 here. So now if I hide, for example, the horn antenna, so this is essentially this one that we have here, uh, would be the narrow one would be the H plane of the slotted waveguide, and the other one, the broader one, would be the E plane. So now uh, I might want to, for example, uh, bring also the E and H plane of the horn antenna. So you see that uh, this is the E plane and H plane of the horn antenna. Let me for one second uh, 
uh, height, the E plane and H plane of a slotted waveguide antenna. So this is for the horn antenna. The reason that the beam width is similar for the horn antenna is that the aperture size in the E plane cut and H plane cut are very similar, whereas for the other one is different. So so now I have everything again and you can also check the pattern using this Cartesian way of presenting it.